second welfare theorem so okay let me just draw the edgeworth box first what does it say right And let me just say that, of course, this is uh, individual A out here. This is individual B out here. So these are the X's for individual B, the, uh, individual A, and these are the X's for individual B. And uh, these are, uh, let's say, the set of uh, Pareto efficient allocations you have. Right? And here lies your endowment. Here lies your endowment. And the indifference curve for individual A is passing through this like this. And the individual curve, sorry, individual indifference curve for individual B is passing like this. Right, beta? So they are passing through the endowments. Fair enough. Now, can I, of course, all of this is the set of the Pareto efficient allocation. So is there a way? that uh, this particular, let's say what, E1. So this is a Pareto efficient allocation, right? This is uh, a Pareto efficient allocation. So can you find the prices at which this Pareto efficient allocation will be a competitive equilibrium, right? So the question is that, is there a way that we can find out the prices at which this Pareto efficient allocation a competitive equilibrium, yes. So uh, I can just draw the line like this. Uh, so I can just draw the line ta -ta 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 -ta, which is passing through the E1 and the endowment point. It is passing through the E1 and the endowment point. Uh, so the budget line has to pass through this. So given this budget line, Individual one is going to maximize here. Let's see. And individual two maximizes here. Set up like this. So, so this Pareto efficient point actually becomes the competitive equilibrium. So this is the first starting. So what we are asking is that given the Pareto efficient allocation. given the Pareto efficient allocation, can we find the prices such that it is a market equilibrium? such that it is a market equilibrium, yes, under certain conditions, of course, I mean, you have to assume that these preferences are convex, they're continuous, and they are monotonic, right? So one thing is this, now if you look at uh, uh, this, this of course is the Pareto efficient allocation, how do you know this? Why? Because uh, the most preferred set, the preferred set for me is this, the preferred set for you is this, and this is completely disjoint, right? So you've been able to find out the prices which are supporting this Pareto efficient allocation to become a competitive equilibrium, right? So one thing is that, uh, well, if you, so can we just write it this way? Now, if I want to make this allocation, let's say a competitive equilibrium, this is a Pareto efficient allocation. So can you make this a competitive equilibrium? Uh, not straight away. You may not be able to make this a competitive equilibrium straight away. But you can probably do this. So if the budget line becomes like this, and there is a redistribution of the endowment from, let's say, E to E2, right? Then you can always find out a price line which is passing through this. So there is there is a redistribution of the endowment. So first of all, you have to move from E to E2. And then there could be a line which is passing through 
this Pareto efficient point and the and the new endowment point? How will you move from E to E two? There is a redistribution which is going to take place. I mean, maybe the government is going to tax or subsidize. So in this case, since individual one has a lot of X, right, and this much of Y, right? and uh, so what is what 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 the government is going to do? Government is going to tax in terms of X. That is, they will say that fine, please come here at this particular point. So it is anyway definitely taxing individual a a lot right this way without changing the prices so what you're saying is that if the preference if the preferences are convex continuous monotonic right <clears throat> then any pareto efficient allocation can be supported as competitive equilibrium through to appropriate redistribution of endowment, through appropriate redistribution of endowment, right? So what are you saying? Again, listen to me. You started with E. You asked, can E2 be a competitive equilibrium? Yes. You've drawn this line. And at this point, what is the highest indifference curve? I can draw this one. At this point, what is the highest indifference curve? You can draw this one. This is what the market equilibrium is, right? Then you asked, can you, okay, from, from this endowment, you have supported this Pareto efficient allocation to be a competitive equilibrium. Can you support even this Pareto efficient allocation to be also a, a, a competitive equilibrium? Not directly, not directly. So you will have to redistribute resources from E to E2. Right, so you have to really reduce the resource of individual one. Uh, so government is taxing individual one a lot and subsidizing individual B a lot. So this way it is just the purchasing power change what is happening. Uh, so without any change in the prices, let's say. So what happens is, if this becomes, if this becomes the price line, then yes, given this, where am I going to? Maximize here. Where are you going to maximize? Here. So then W is could actually become uh, the, the competitive equilibrium. Not directly. So through the appropriate redistribution of endowment. And how do you do so? How do you do this government? How do you do this? Through government intervention. Right. That is, uh, you are physically transferring uh, resources from one individual to the other. That is the transfer of purchasing power. Maybe do that. Hmm. Or lump sum taxes or subsidies. Transfer the physical value of the endowment also. It could also, also be that transfer. Physical value of the endowment or lump sum taxes or subsidies. Lump sum taxes or subsidies, one thing, right? Well, this is for uh, when you need convex preferences, right? So social, uh, this uh, second welfare theorem is only going to work if the preferences are convex. So if you do not have convex preferences, um, um, uh, then it may not hold, right? 
So for example, this. So if I do not have convex preference, so for example, So this is individual A, this is individual B and uh, this is one point, this is one, these are not convex preferences, these are the, uh, these are the what do you call indifference curves for individual one this is the higher indifference curve for individual b let's say given this price line he's maximizing here so as far as this point is concerned p1 right this is a pareto efficient point and at this point even the market is clearing so p1 right this is a Pareto efficient point. Where market is clear. Right. This is a Pareto efficient point where market is clearing. Right. Uh, so for market clearance, I mean, you definitely want that a individual A and B, they should both optimize at the same point. Right, individual A and B, they should both uh, optimize at the same point, but there exists this point P2, right? There exists this point P2. So, however, uh, there is also the point P2. There is also the point P2 where uh, he is maximizing his utility. Individual A is maximizing his utility out here. So he is not maximizing at point P1, right? Although it's a Pareto efficient point, uh, they are tangent to each other at this point, but he is not maximizing. Individual A is not maximizing his utility out here. So, <clears throat> Since, uh, I mean, this is not the point of the maximum utility. So you cannot obtain a Pareto efficient point if the market does not clear. So therefore, we can't obtain a Pareto efficient point And market does not clear, right? So it is not working in case of the non-convex preferences, right? Okay, thank you very much.